Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and kind of show you guys a super crazy endgame juicing strat. Now I didn't figure this out by any means. I actually saw a clip of it on Ziz's stream a few days ago. And if you guys have been watching the live stream, you'll know all about what I've been doing. And it has to do with the rogue exiles, but instead of farming them on yellow tier maps, I actually farm them in 80% delirium tier 16 maps. So the strat is extremely expensive. And I will talk more about it, but first I'm going to go run it so you guys can kind of understand. Uh, so in this instance here, I'm going to be replacing this top pack with Rogue Exiles, which you can find these All Flame Embers. The primary reason I'm doing this is I hit a 600% Quant. I think like Quant Rarity pack size are the best to go for. People told me that Rarity is better than Quant, but in this instance, I'm just putting this on anyway, just to kind of show you guys. So this map here is 80% Delhi. As you saw, we'll go ahead and show that. I'm using Anarchy Scarab, uh, Reliquary Scarab of Overloads, G Gigantum, and Scarab, uh, basically two of these here, and then Anarchy on the map device. My Atlas, I will go ahead and link to you guys. It's pretty rippy as it focuses a lot on the map modifier effect. We also have a nice little overlay here from the one of the bigger supporter packs, the $500 core supporter pack, so it'll actually track how many uniques are in your map. Now, the reason why I am showing this strategy is because I myself have farmed not one mage blood, but two mage bloods raw out of here, raw implying that they actually drop just from the encounter. This is not to mention a lot of the other T0 uniques that have dropped as well. Um, so because of that, people were asking. So I just wanted to go ahead and make the video. Now, with this setup, I did not have a Defiance of Destiny when I started, nor did I have a mage blood when I started. So I would say my character was probably like I had an Adorn setup, so let's say between I guess Adorn now going up in price, probably about a hundred divines on my build as is. Uh, but then from this strat, I farm the currency. You could also apply this to lower level content and then upscale the content as you get more gear. But we're not going to talk about the build. Let's go ahead and just jump into it, and I'm going to explain how I do it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find the ritual that has the most lag. The reason I'm going for the most lag is because the most lag means there's probably the most rogue exiles there. And the more rogue exiles, the more we're basically going to juice. But you always want to do your rituals at the end here. So I'm just going to come back to that another time. Remember that a nice thing as a chieftain here, we just need enough damage to trigger the explodes. You don't necessarily have to be able to kill everything, so this is one really nice thing where you don't need crazy gear offensively. You just have to be able to survive the content. Now, obviously, don't do 80% deli when you're not geared. Keep it to 20% as well. So this one was an okay one, nothing too crazy. Uh, again, if you like hold alt here, you can kind of see. Uh, we're hiding a lot of uniques on this filter. I'm on my hyper endgame RF filter. Let's go ahead and peek this next ritual. What do we have here? This one is pretty laggy. This one is, is the first one so far. This is definitely our first one. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a portal right over here to basically make it so that is our ritual that we're starting with. You also get an unethical amount of coffins doing this strat. Okay, here is the boss room. No altar here, sadly. Oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, we're gonna, um, we're gonna come back to that. All right, what's over here? Here is another area. This ritual might actually win. I'm not sure. <laughs> Between this one and the other one, I'm not quite sure which one wins there. Did I not get any altars? No, I didn't. Unlucky. 
On the altars, I like to focus quantity and rarity, but I don't think we got any here, so. You also get a ton of T17 maps from this. I have found myself over, I think, probably close to 70. Uh, I ran like quite a few of them today as well. You get so many T17s, it's crazy. I think it just has to do with the rarity because it's dropping from unique mobs specifically. Now, from what I was told, and I have no idea about this, I'm not good when it comes to magic finding. I was told that player rarity scales multiplicatively with map rarity. Now on here, we take a big note on the Atlas to make it so that our rarity is uh, basically our quantity of the map applies to the rarity instead. I'm actually going to take this very spooky note here for chaos. I would not recommend taking that. So I have a little bit of player rarity. You can see here 114, and that's primarily just from gold flask with increased rarity. 100% just for this content specifically. Okay, let's get started. So there were two that were pretty solid. So remember, we want to start with the two rituals that we originally found. The one that I put a portal and then the other one. Oh, unfortunately, I can't do trades. Unlucky. This one was pretty juicy too, if I remember right. So I'll just click this one. And the reason why is the mobs that come out of this ritual will get applied to the next ritual. So you want to start with the juicier ones first. And you can gauge this by the amount of lag on your PC. So about halfway through this ritual, my PC will probably kind of kick into overdrive and the gears will start turning. Okay, I think it's beginning. Yup, there, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Okay, yup. If I were to press Alt here, you can see the amount of drops. And naturally, the loot filter is designed to hide almost everything <laughs> that is basically not worth value. So it will be hiding quite a bit of stuff. Now we're going to go over to where we dropped our portal, and we're going to go ahead and just do that. I'm just going to go ahead and bank this really quickly. I've also been farming like an unethical amount of coffins from doing this. You know, I said that earlier, but to just show an example, I got a folder here called Weezing, and um, yep. Okay, so this one is going to be our next one. Just get that away. All right, so we're at two hundred and thirty-five unique monsters. Let's see how many we can pull out of here. I just got this hideout, uh, well, this map device today. And I've only gotten to try it in like literally five maps. So the highest we've had so far is 550 ro uh, unique mobs. I'm sure I've had way more than that before though. I just never got to track until right now, basically. Oh boy. Yeah, it's definitely on the lighter side of the drops. Okay, nothing there. As you can imagine, most of the money here is going to come from basically T1 drops, T0 drops, uh, extremely rare drops, but most of them are going to come from just rare items, right? Like uh, Azuri's foibles around 100 chaos to a divine. You get a whole bunch of tabulas that are like 15 C each, heat shivers. 
And then you have like Coward's Trial, which is a map, Putrid Cloister. Those are between 30 and 40 C. And then you have all the random uniques that are actually worth a bit more, like, uh, uh, let's see, what do we have here that actually sells? Kiri's Ire, I think. The body armor is like 1.5 to 2 divine, probably more depending on rolls. Then there are some other ones like Cloak of Flames can sell for like 500, sorry, 50 plus chaos depending on rolls. Uh, I'm trying to remember, there's just so many things that drop. I think uh, there's a there's a special ring that gives you curses based off power charges. That's like a divine. I think Valyriums are used for the, uh, what, what should we call it? Reverse, um, sorry, Fulcrum Chieftain build. So I typically pick up some uniques I know that people use and vol them for good implicits. All right, and then here's the last one. I'm going to completely turn off loot here so you can see the like the little loot ring explosion here. Oh boy. Yeah, so doing this in really high deli like this, you definitely are going to need if you're playing this build, a Defiance of Destiny, if you're not playing this build, a block setup with life gain or ES gain on block because the amount of hits are ridiculous here. Oh, Omniphobia, how you doing, bud? I mean, Kosis. And there you have it. I'm just going to go ahead and loot a little bit here. Some Venter's Gamble. Let's see. Okay. Oops, misclick that. I typically just buy random shit out of the Ritual Shop. I don't really like pay that much attention to it. The primary use of Ritual is to just revive the mobs. This is what Ziz was doing, and I kind of just basically built it around what he was doing. All right, so to explain a little bit more, uh, I'm running Toxic Sewers primarily because I love the map and it clumps mobs really close together. Um, you want that when you're doing this for two reasons. Number one as Chieftain, our explode node located right over here really does the heavy lifting when you don't have good damage. I'm gonna turn off the Enduring Cry because you need to shut up. All right, this does a super amount of heavy lifting basically when you're explode chaining. That's why Toxic Sewers works so well. Um, you remember, it's a 5% chance to proc, but look how many mobs you kill in a map, right? Next up, when I get my map, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it over here. So I just, ideally tier 16, let's grab a 16, there we go. Alright, so chisel, alk, I just look for 20% plus pack size. The higher the better, um, then I pretty much will come over here and deli orbit and vol. I get annoyed because I have to actually buy maps if I'm voling them because so many of them brick. So I kind of stopped volleying, but you probably really should. As for the Deli Orb, I've only run a couple that are above 20%, but because my build can handle it and there's so much investment in the maps, I think it's totally worth me going up to 80% Deli on these maps. And then you go back to the Scarab process, which I talked about with Anarchy. As for my Atlas tree, you can kind of see it here. It basically goes full on into rarity, quantity, uh, map modifier. Well, not rarity, quantity, but map modifier effect. I go full on and take every map modifier effect wheel. Um, this one is not actually a map mod wheel. It's just like maps. Actually, I should probably remove this here or, um, potentially like more map modifier effect. Well, I'm curious if this affects tier 17 drops. Yep. So this is pretty much what we have. I'm also thinking of dropping the scarab nodes and going all into map modifier effect, but I don't really fully know. Also just realized I have shrines. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'll probably remove the shrines. I don't think I need them. Then again, I'm not sure because you get like an extra pack of mobs by a shrine. I mean, I'm very curious how that influences with the exiles when you take them over. But yeah, that's, so that's pretty much about it. To just kind of like show through some of my tabs, you can see like some of the rare drops like Ruth Calls Pelt. They're not worth a lot, but they're rare drops. Um, you can see like, uh, let's see, the Ephemeral Edges. I've already sold a bunch of these Heat Shivers and stuff. Whole bunch of Enter's Gambles. Um, where else are they? Uh, a ton of replica dragon fangs. I have a headhunter, but this was actually not from this strategy. It was from a different one. Two brass domes and uh, let's see, Shab's revelation. A whole bunch of crazy stuff. So I hope this video helped you guys out. Remember, unfortunately, this is a very high investment strat and very, very rippy content as well. So you do have to be very careful. 
to cover my defensive layers before I end here, we're rocking 90 max all res, 90% crit damage reduction, overcapped on everything, chaos res, overcapped on chaos res. I think I have close to 90% fizz damage taken as elemental. When you combine the lightning coil at 50, the dawnbreaker at 20, the taste of hate at 15, along with the uh 8% uh, of my helmet, so maybe maybe in the 80s actually, and then we're running like 11,000 armor to kind of cap out the rest of that. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much about it. We got the Defiance of Destiny that does most of the heavy lifting when it comes to actually taking the damage. Plus, I realize I got to re anoint this and drop these three nodes, but that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv/box, except for Sundays. See you guys all later.